not sure exactly when else this key opens, but you should know that every door in this city is open to you and to your teammates. We world champions! Enjoy this moment and have fun with it. A ha, 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 ha. A player and a laugh that got this city going about a year ago, and now Kawhi and the Raptors bringing home a championship to Toronto as the NBA champs celebrate their big win with a big parade. Many people set up on the route in the middle of the night, all to party with the Raptors and get a glimpse of the Larry O'Brien trophy. It was almost 12 hours of celebration for many people out there. The vast majority of it was joyful and peaceful, but in the last hour, things did take a scary turn when gunfire sent part of the crowd running at Nathan Phillips Square. Natalie Nanowski is near that scene and joins us live now. Natalie, what can you tell us? What is the very latest? Well, Chris, I'm actually just going to let you know that the police chief is going to be speaking, but this is the exact scene where it happened, so I'm just going to take you in for that update now. Yep. Okay. Thank you for being here. So today at approximately 3.45 uh, in the evening, uh, calls were coming in to 911 with regards to a shooting occurred. Um, what happened, officers arrived relatively quickly, and uh, as a result of that, um, three people were arrested in total, two on one incident and one on another. Uh, we've retrieved two firearms at this point in time. The investigation is incredibly early at this point in time. We're appealing for witnesses, but, but the, the most important thing was that uh, with all the resources that were here, uh, the apprehensions were done incredibly quickly after the incident itself, um, and I'm glad for the work that the men and women have done for this. But on the go forward, as you look here, this, this did not happen in a vacuum. This happened in broad open spaces right now where we had over a million people that were here. We want the witnesses, those who were here, 99.9% .9 of the people were here to enjoy the festivities of the Raptors winning the uh, championship. We want them to step up and to help us by giving us uh, as much evidence if you had, whether you saw it, if you could call 416-808-5200, or if you have any video images of any kind to assist us with this investigation so that we can uh, uh, continue to investigate and find out exactly what happened, exactly who is involved, and uh, apprehend any more people that uh, may be uh, out there that are, that are involved in this particular incident. Chief, are your officers prepared for this? The shooting happened in the midst of, you know, thousands of people in this crowd. Were, were officers prepared? No, absolutely. Whenever we have these types of uh, events, especially large-scale events, there's a tremendous amount of work that is put in in order to make sure that, that we keep our the citizens, whether you live here, work here, or play here, to keep them safe. And so the, I can't uh, describe the amount of resources that you don't see that are involved in the type of work that is involved to get to where we are today. Uh, we kept it as much as a celebratory event, which it really was. And at the end of the day, it, it was, in fact, However, we have the ability of transitioning into a security event if necessary. And in this particular case, because of that quick apprehensions and the fact that we're able to control the situation to the best of our uh, abilities in a short period of time, uh, the, the event was still able to go on. It did not stop the event and it kept going on and the vast majority of people uh, really uh, got to have a, a, a really good fun day. It definitely changed the, the mood though. So I mean, obviously the Sorry? What do we know about the suspects? So well, it's really early right now and we're trying to see uh, what roles, if any, the people that we apprehend uh, have in this particular case. Uh, we do have people arrested with firearms, and so that's the start of this investigation. Now to see whether or not they're included or involved in this, or if there are parties to this, is where we're trying to expand on this investigation, which is why I'm here. I want to make that appeal so that we can uh, connect the dots to the best of our ability so that we can bring this case in the right direction. How many people injured Injured in total? Do we know? We know two gunshots and then have them trampled. Well, right now, I, I can't uh, speak to the trampling. I, I know that some people were injured and we could hear uh, live feeds and, and uh, the paramedics uh, worked fantastically with the fire as well as with, uh, with uh, 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 police officers. Um, we know that there are four victims right now that uh, have gunshot wounds. Uh, none of them are life-threatening at this point in time, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, the, the resolve uh, to the situation was as quick as it was and uh, we were able to continue on with, uh, with the rest of the event the way that we were able to seamlessly. It definitely Changed the mood though. I mean, people look panic stricken. I was close to where that one woman was shot. People look panic stricken. They were shielding their babies, their small children. What would you say to the people of Toronto that came here for a joyous occasion and left panicked? 
Well, anyone that was in, in this very small geographical space, uh, certainly there would be a, a tremendous amount of alarm. But when we look at the size of this footprint, when we look at the size of the amount of people that were here, um, the vast, vast majority didn't even know that this happened until it was put out there. So having said that, the, the, the most important thing was the ability to have the resources in place to make sure that we had the ability of looking after the medical wellness, had the ability of keeping the event going and not making it a security event, but dealing with that isolated situation which we had here. And I think that speaks in volumes of the level of cooperation from all of the first responders, as well as working with the uh, private sectors to make sure that the conclusions that we had were as quick as possible. I'm not happy that there is a shooting that occurred, but I'm also not going to let the shooting define this fantastic event that took place when we had so many people that were here that had such a great time. And as you can see, the crowd dispersed really, really well. And uh, we're going to hopefully enjoy the rest of the evening uh, the way that Torontonians do, uh, in a lawful and respectful environment, which defines us, I think. Sure. Can I ask you about the parade route and the crowd management for that? I mean, there was a barricade the entire way. The parade was slow because of it. What would you say about the crowd management along the parade route? Well, I, I, I look for keeping it as a uh, uh, an event that is more of a celebratory. And, and so that's our primary focus. When we're here, we're here to make sure that people are safe. And when we talk about the route, everybody was safe, other than some people were dehydrated and things along those lines. But we had the uh, the paramedic teams that were there to help assist in all that. So we're not going to turn it into a security event. We're not going to transition to that. We didn't feel that there was a need for that. This is a once in a lifetime for so many people. And you know, everyone got excited and they enjoyed the moment. And we're not going to come in here and take those moments away unless it's absolutely necessary. And so it took a little longer, uh, but I don't think people are interested in the timelines. When people are here days in advance uh, to be part of this, uh, that speaks to the, the energy and, and the vibe that was going on here. And, and, and so we let it go as is. And as you can see, it translated really well. Uh, by the time everyone got on stage, everyone forgot about the time. Everyone paid attention to the Raptors and to the presenters and to why we were, in fact, here to begin with. All right, Chris. So that was the police chief giving us a little bit of an update about the shooting, about what happened, about the chaos that ensued after the uh, the Raptors took the stage. So what I can tell you, Chris, right now is that we know a total of four people have been injured. Those are with gunshot wounds. The chief cannot yet comment on how many people were trampled. Now, where I am standing, this is where it all happened. There was a shooting that happened somewhere over here. We do have a clip of that. A witness sent it over to me. If you pay attention to that clip, you hear that there are four clear shots fired. Have a listen. <laughs> So there you go. You heard those gunshots. I actually heard them myself. Initially, I had heard fireworks. There were multiple fireworks going off. Then I heard something different. You hear th you hear that bang. It, it does sound quite different. I was originally at Queen and University, then walked over here to Queen and Bay. It was absolute chaos. At one point, Chris, I did see a woman laying in the street. Paramedics were tending to her. I spoke with her sister and she told me that she in fact was one of the victims who was trampled as, as people started running and, and leaving this scene. Chris? And the chief there saying that the suspects he believes are in custody but looking for more information from the public tonight. Thanks for this, Natalie. For people heading out of the city's core, you saw there in part of Natalie's report the thousands, tens of thousands of people who were there. Patience is going to be key tonight. Far Morelli is standing by live at Queen Subway Station. Far, what's the latest from uh, what you can tell us? Well, Chris, we're trying to figure that out ourselves. We're told that Queen Subway Station is being reopened, but the doors behind me are still locked. You might also see uh, some of the broken glass here and some of the damage from uh, the chaos here today. But that's not the reason why the station is closed. The station was closed because of the overcrowding issue. You can take a look down the street. You can see there's still crowds filtering out uh, from the celebrations. Uh, Dundas and Queen Station were closed uh, after the uh, the celebration at Nathan Phillips Square because of the overcrowding and it caused a lot of confusion. We bumped into people uh, who were unsure about where to go, whether they could get on the subway, where they get off the subway. It was a very fluid situation and it continues to be a very fluid situation for people getting home. Of course, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the celebration continued uh, into the evening, which many people didn't expect. They uh, thought it would be over by the afternoon and of course it is affecting their commute home. We had a chance to speak to some of those people and here's what they had to say. 
I don't really know what's going on, but I think at this point, I might just like walk up to Bloor, just take the train there and see if that's open. Uh, otherwise, I don't really know. So what happened when you went to get on the subway just now? They've like literally boarded it up. Like you go down the stairs, like right over there, and they've got like planks. Someone just told me that this was open. Yeah. Looks like it's boarded up and suddenly closed through the evening. Well, I guess I'll make my way over to St. Patrick's then. I don't know. What does that mean for your commute home then? Um, you know what? I am going to see if I have a friend downtown with a car because if they do, then I'm going to take that. So far, we could hear the frustration in those people's voices. Uh, what is the TTC saying about all of this? Well, the TTC, I just actually got off the phone with a spokesman from the TTC, and they said they are hoping to have these stations open, uh, Dundas and Queen, uh, very shortly, so that will help a lot of people. But the message throughout the day, Chris, has been if you can walk out of downtown tonight, you might want to consider that because there are still a whole bunch of closures. If you want to take a look uh, on Queen Street to, to my left here, there are still no streetcars running. And the reason for that is there were a lot of issues with people climbing on some of the TTC infrastructure uh, today. So they actually haven't reopened the streetcars on Queen. I'm told they're running on King, but there's still uh, some issues. Uh, I'm told on Dundas, uh, no service between university and parliament. A whole lot of other issues in addition to these subway closures. We had a chance to speak to Stuart Green from the TTC about that, and here's what he had to say. Well, uh, we, uh, we're expecting for unprecedented crowds. I mean, this is something that Toronto's never seen before. Uh, so we have extra service out in terms of our subways. Uh, we have extra streetcars available. Uh, we had some service suspension through the downtown core today, but some of that's coming back now. The King Street service is back up and running. Um, but this is going to be, uh, for us, is going to be a work in progress throughout the afternoon. Um, you know, there's gonna, there are going to be potentially, you know, two million people who are in town for this, this event today, uh, all leaving at the same time. So, Chris, as much as it's been a long day for fans out celebrating today, they really need to expect a long commute home and, of course, uh, to keep a little bit of patience along the way. And sage advice from you to just walk if it's too difficult to take any other mode of transportation. Thanks for this, Farah. So as Farah was just saying, the struggle to get home is real tonight. Part of the reason for that is the long wait to get this parade finished. It snaked through the city streets slower than I think anyone anticipated, but boy, was it fun. Raptor fans from across Canada descend on Toronto's downtown. Toronto deserves this, let's go baby. That's so exciting because I've never met them before. Well, I've never seen them in person. They climbed high and higher, hoping to catch a glimpse of their heroes. This is great for the city. This is great for the country. Go Raptors, go right? Raptors! We came from the bottom, now we're here. We're so happy, man. It's the best feeling to be in Toronto right now. The best city. Toronto, we did it. We wanted to win here, and we have, finally. Levon Jabrio left Toronto years ago for Australia, but as the Raptors neared the trophy, he flew home. We can't really put it into words. I've, I, I've tried to find words in the dictionary to describe this, but I've never felt this unity in our city, man, in our country. Most making it an extra long weekend. It took me eight hours. I got here late last night, and then I woke up 5 a.m., come chill with the homies. For those who were working today, that basically stopped, and for long periods of time, so did the parade itself. So many people, the streets were clogged, and the chants changed. Canada's only NBA team is the first outside the U.S. to ever get this honor, and the party culminated at Nathan Phillips Square. The superstars came out one by one, greeted by Toronto's mayor, Ontario's premier, the prime minister, and the Raptors' global ambassador. For a team that's been in the league for 24 years, many said this was about time, and about time for the country too. Canada hasn't seen a pro sports team win a major title since the 90s when the Toronto Blue Jays won back-to-back -back World Series. Neera Gupta was there. It was amazing, absolutely the first time ever for me and my girls to be part of uh, such, uh, you know, history. But I think today is better. It is really, really, it seems bigger, better, and I don't know, we're overjoyed. We 
All that anticipation made today's victory celebration all the sweeter. And now so confident, many are looking for a second helping next year. And could you imagine? All right, so one of the first things they teach you as a reporter, never let go of your mic. That rule did not apply today for Greg Ross. He shared it with some Raptors. Take a look at some of those moments. We're at the parade, live and direct. It's your boy, Norman Powell, number 24, Toronto Raptors. Um, NBA champion, 2019. They know what time it is. John Lee right here. Patting my man, John Lee. Teresa right here. We out here. Get, get the background of the crowd real quick, though. The crowd is crazy. Canada, this one was for y'all, man. We wanted to bring the first championship home in a rival place, man. We understood the grind. That's my slogan right here. Understand the grind. You know, I might, I might take over for the day. This might be mine. We're not live, so I'm not gonna curse. But it's unbelievable. We got our family, our friends here. We got, we got future the prince here. We got Drake back there. We got everybody here. The city is amazing. Look at the turnout, and we ain't even halfway there, and we've been on the boat or the bus for two hours. We appreciate y'all. I'm gonna throw the mic to Drake. Here we go. Hey, coming to you live from the big city with the greatest in the world, the champions. I don't even know who this is. He got on a nice plaid jacket. We out here. Hey. We got one with the dip. That was amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, how awesome is that? Thank you, Drake. Great moment. And look at these fans just soaking it in as Drake kind of plays with everybody. Oh, my goodness. Well, Drake might not know who Greg is, but boy, <laughs> did that lead to one of the moments of the day. I think that rule should be scrapped. What do you think, Colette? Yeah, great mic drop. That was an awesome <laughs> moment. I loved it. Yeah, I love uh, it. I love how Kyle Lowry will not let go of the trophy like all day. That was awesome. Too. I, know, I wouldn't let go of the trophy either, though. Let's yeah. be real. If that was me up there on that bus, I'd be holding on to it as well. Yeah, that was like his third baby today. <laughs> That's right. Good for him. Uh, and good for us to get weather like this right for so, finally you know you can have the games in Jurassic Park where it's pouring rain and freezing but for our parade day just an absolute beauty temperature a little bit below seasonal I don't think anyone was complaining too much nearly 22 degrees for the high and our average high at this time of year is about 24 degrees and these are the current readings out there we do have some quiet conditions it's looking like a really nice evening I know there's a lot of folks almost stranded kind of thing and got to make their way home so at least uh, we're not going to have any active weather to deal with as they're making their way the satellite radar imagery tells the story here we've got a ridge of high pressure kind of a system to the south of us another one back towards the northwest in between between. We're doing very nicely and we will continue to through the overnight hours tonight. Tomorrow morning we'll have sunshine the early part of the day. A few more clouds may begin to build in. A little bit of instability tries to pop up but really all I think we're going to see is a little bit of cloud cover because we're just in a situation with that sinking more stable air. So a nice day on tap for us tomorrow and in terms of the temperatures we've got 13 degrees for our overnight low tonight and tomorrow afternoon a very pleasant 23 degrees with a southerly breeze. There is a greater chance of some showers coming back in the forecast. You knew there would be. I'll tell you when that's coming up. That's okay. A great way to kick off the week. That's right. Thanks, Colette. Mm -hmm, no problem. Now, you may be wondering, where is Dwight Drummond, the man of the hour? Well, he, of course, spent the day hosting our special live coverage of the Raptors parade. And as the event stretched into overtime, well, so did Dwight. And he has the evening off, except for right now. We brought him back. He is still <laughs> at Nathan Phillips Square. Dwight, what a fantastic day of coverage. I know it stretched into a lot more hours than you had expected, but if you can boil it all down into one moment that stands out for you, what would that be? Man, um, for me, I guess it would be that team finally hitting the stage after that long all-day wait for that parade to wind its way through the city. And 
you know, there's so many people here. That's why the parade is so slow. That's not a bad thing. But when those champions hit that stage here at Nathan Phillips Square and that crowd just went crazy, it was the culmination of a moment we've been waiting for for a long time. For me, from the beginning of the season and this trade was made, but also just as a sports fan in Toronto and, and our reputation for futility in the playoffs when it comes to this town, just to finally realize the dream of a championship for my city. And absolutely, it has brought our city together in such an astounding way. I know that you have been a Raptors fan since day one. You were at the very first game. As a fan, what does all of this mean to you personally? You know, I was saying this to uh, Adrian Arsenal, who I hosted with here today, that growing up and playing basketball in the city, basketball was a unifier because you travel around the city going to different pickup runs and you'd be at, you know, the Jewish Community Center playing with that community. You would go down to, say, High Park and that area where you have the Croatians and the Lithio Lithuanians and the... Uh, uh, just the different people from Eastern Europe in that area of the city playing ball. Then we'd go out to Scarborough and we'd play ball with them. It really was, this game was a game that a lot of people from different countries around the world played and enjoyed. And then I found with this Raptors championship that it brought the city together and it brought those same communities who, you know, I feel like I've been playing pickup with all these years. It brought us together to celebrate this championship. It brought some guys that maybe I played with. They're there with their kids. They're here with their parents. Not only the diversity too, Chris, which I really enjoyed, but the diversity of generations. Grandma was here today. Mom was here. Dad was here. Baby was here. Everybody really took part in this and then the whole national perspective of it. How this was not just Toronto's team. In the end, this really became Canada's team. And you know, we hear about the the rest of the country say, ah, oh, we don't really like Toronto. Well, it felt like a lot of love was in the air around Canada for Toronto and the Raptors today. Such a family affair. And Dwight, I don't know if you remember, but in about hour four of our coverage, I caught a champagne cork that flew off the Raptors bus. It had to be one of my highlights of the day. And I promised you I would keep that cork. I'm holding it in my hand, showing <laughs> it to the audience now. I have it for you. I can't wait to give it to you when you get back to work. Now, now, did you know who popped it? Was it from Champagne Pappy Drake himself? Was it from Kawhi? Do you know who, who put it off to you? I could barely see, brother. I couldn't tell who was on top of that thing because I was almost under the bus <laughs> throughout much of the day. But I have it, and I know that it came from the top. It, it was great watching those players shower their fans with champagne after we showered them with so much adoration throughout this season. It's been a fun ride. Let's hope we get to do it again next year, even with the long day and me losing my voice out here, Chris. <laughs> That's true. Nobody minds. All right. Well, thanks a lot for this. You uh, have a great night and get some rest. Thanks for pinch hitting for me, buddy. You bet. Bye, Dwight. So it was a once-in-a-lifetime parade that shut down this city, celebrating the Toronto Raptors as NBA champions as we head to break. Here's more of this historic day with thoughts from some of the best minds in basketball and a voice CBC viewers will know well. This was the parade. <laughs> yes. And a lot of We've Toronto you thought it were gonna, was going to happen this year, yes. but not with these guys. On the box of things that you want done before you leave this earth, this is one of them. I'm so happy for the city, the country, the province. The fans have just been unbelievable. It's actually come to fruition what we always dreamed of. Like, you know, I, I competed to win. I didn't compete to do a whole bunch of other things. All I wanted to do was win and hold a trophy. I'm so proud. It was like a, a big balloon burst of, of pride that we finally got through it and you know the guys and Masai deserve all the credit they just they got it done Masai works in mysterious ways he doesn't have, he doesn't think like a North American you know he, he thinks abstract but really he ended up playing chess and everybody was playing checkers so <laughs> I mean that's really what he did and uh, I'm just uh, super happy and uh, very happy that you guys asked me to share this moment with you. Like, this is amazing. Uh, I don't know that anybody could have envisioned this, right? Like maybe, maybe a meeting, meeting you at the airport. Uh, you know, when you when you win the championship with the flags. A couple and, of people, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> but two million people in the street. You know, I don't know that anybody could envision something like this. I think that uh, this is amazing when you think of you know 50 plus different Jurassic Park locations across the country watching the 13 million people you know watching the game. 
uh, I, I, I can't imagine what the spike is going to look like in participation for young girls and boys in this yeah. country. The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. Welcome back. You may remember him as the kid who stumped Kyle Lowry during an NBA Finals press conference. We know him as Arjun Ram from CBC Kids News. Adrian Arsenault and Dwight Drummond caught up with him earlier today during the parade and their special broadcast. As we uh, head to break, here's what he thought about the Raps being NBA champs. 
Now, we're experiencing history here. I had my 17-year-old say to me, Daddy, can you believe it? 24 <laughs> years, 24 years. And all kind of, I hear all kind of little kids talk about 24 years when they haven't been on this yeah. earth for 12 <laughs> years yet. Do you, can you see this? Like, enjoy it now, because if you're a Leaf fan, you know, we know what that's been like waiting for the next championship so to come. Do you understand the significance of experiencing this in your lifetime at such a young age? I mean, I wasn't there when the inaugural season was no. open, right? I wasn't, I didn't know how it was, but, you know, for a 13 year old to see a Canadian, not a Toronto team, yes. a Canadian team yes. to yep. win a championship that most of the team, 29 of the teams are um, American, right? So I, it was just like, it's a moment in history. So to witness so many fans come out to support this team all the time, you know, to see everybody so excited, it maybe made my, my heart was like pumping 20 times per second. So <laughs> tell me something, when you watch something on TV, it always feels one way. It's, yeah. it's something totally different to like show up in person. So. We're here in Nathan Phillips Square. As you look around here, does anything surprise you? Did anything make you say, oh, I had no idea? Yeah, I mean, I live in Hamilton. I watch it on TV all the time. The fans in Jurassic, you know, going crazy, climbing on traffic lights. It's like, <laughs> what? It's like, and then I'm walking around trying to fight my way through all of this. And I'm like, man, these people, they're amazing. You know, I, I never thought this would happen in Toronto and Canada. At school, we kind of had our own parade. Yeah, you know? oh, oh, I love it. <laughs> At recess, throwing basketballs around, you no know. Way. We're jumping around. It's like, oh my God, we did it, right? It's like, we feel like we just came off the playing for the Raptors. We feel like like we this is our thing, right? So like, we're all going crazy, honestly. So it, it was amazing.
three people were arrested in total, two on one incident and one on another. Uh, we've retrieved two firearms at this point in time. The investigation is incredibly early at this point in time. A shooting near the southeast corner of Nathan Phillips Square sends people fleeing. Two people were shot around 3.45 this afternoon near the tail end of the Raptors' victory rally. Their injuries said to be serious but not life-threatening. The chief there updating the situation about a half hour ago, appealing for witnesses to come forward. Now, despite that shooting, it was a mostly peaceful day, full of celebrations right across the city. Nathan Phillips Square had an enormous crowd, but for those looking for a more family-friendly spot, Coronation Park was the place to be, and that's where Mac the Geber Selassie was. Raptors raining from up above, champagne showers, and fans freaking out. I can't believe that we got that close. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> This is how today's parade got underway. Here on Lakeshore Boulevard, fans came early and they came from near and far. We came all the way from Windsor for Raptors! Yes. All the way from Melbourne, Australia. I'm in my office building, I saw they won, hopped on the plane, same with this guy. Yeah. Have your ball. Crowds go wild. Now, while some followed the parade, others moved over to Coronation Park. This was set up for the overflow of people expected, and it turned out to be a big draw for families. You're a little worried about coming downtown with kids and how busy it was going to be, but this uh, this has been really fun. The park has been really nice. This is the dream for me, man, to have the family out here <laughs> celebrating something like this is truly special for the city. Here, people watched from afar and just enjoyed the day. While in other parts of downtown, the parade came to a standstill at times, and took hours to arrive at Nathan Phillips Square. I feel here, here is way better because, you know, we got to see them really early up close and we just get to chill here. Like, they're not even past university. Nice and relaxing, but we got to be part of the hype in the morning, so I think it kind of is the best of both worlds. Now beyond saying thank you. And today, while the city celebrates its first NBA championship, some are already looking ahead. Whether Kawhi Leonard stays or goes is all the talk. But this fan says, let's focus on the now. Kawhi could leave, he could stay. He, he owes the city absolutely nothing because he brought us a championship on only one year in Toronto. This is the greatest moment ever. Mark de Gebrselassie, CBC News, Toronto. So we've seen what it looked like in the crowds. Now imagine being like Kawhi and the other players actually being on the bus. Well, Greg Ross was the lucky one that got that assignment, and here was that trip. Have you ever seen anything like this before in your life? Oh, man, this is a dream. I'm telling you right now, I'm living a dream right now. You know, I used to watch other teams when they celebrate their championship trophy, and uh, I used to say, man, one day I will to be, you know, you know, here and uh, do those kind of things. And when I'm, I'm here, with my family and uh, we're having so fun, so much fun here. Spicy pea, so we get a spicy pea chat. You got it. Spicy pea. Do you think this will help re-sign Kawhi? Hopefully it does. They gotta they gotta cheer more though. <laughs> they gotta get louder. Are you uh, having conversations with Kawhi behind the scenes saying, come on, resign? I don't know, I don't, but you know what I mean? Like, you want him back, though. I want him back for sure, but at the end of the day, I got to let him make his decision himself, you know? What do you think of this? There's no words for it, man. So we try to show as much love as we can back to our fans. Uh, there's no way we can duplicate or even match what they've done for us throughout the season in our arena and throughout the country, uh, all the support they've showed us, but... You know, we have a lot of fun and try and show them as much love as we can here today. I, I mean, you've won a championship. Have you ever seen anything like this? I have not. I mean, close, but I have not seen anything quite like this. You love this oh, city. Oh, yeah, I love this city. This is my city. It's my home now. You know what I'm saying? Because I got friends now. They're like family now. And then you see how people love us here. So, of course, you always want to go somewhere where people love you. You know, people care about you. And uh, those people who are here, they come here to support us because they love us.
What a fun assignment. The Raptors' Chris Boucher is one of only 13 Canadians playing in the NBA this season, and he's now the first to win a title while playing on a Canadian team. The, un the Montrealer spoke to, of course, Greg Ross, who was, as you just saw, out on the parade route. Here he is again. The pride of Montreal. Look at this logo. He's got his own logo. Yep. Bonjour. Bonjour. You know, it means a lot for me just representing Montreal and, you know, Canada. So I wanted to start something, and I feel like that's a good one. Montreal always showing the support. And um, any Canadians that, you know, lives here knows that, you know, Raptors is the Canadian team, and they support us all the way. This has to mean something extra special for you because you are Canadian and I mean this is Canada's only team yeah. and here we are celebrating. Well, just put in perspective what this means to you. It means a lot. Um, you know, as a Canadian, you know, you want to show, you want to represent, you want us to be champion and we feel like we're on top of the world right now. You know, every t everywhere we go, they followed us, they're supporting us. Um, it took a long way for us to get there, but we're finally here, we're champions and it's an amazing accomplishment. So you saw in all of those shots there, this was a really great day for a parade weather-wise, but how's the rest of the week looking? Well, Colette is going to be back with her long-range forecast just after the break, and she teased us a little earlier. There might be some rain, so we'll find out when. Stay with us, and we'll be right back. So the weather didn't play very nicely throughout the entire playoff run. I was down there in Jurassic Park when there was thunder, there was lightning. We were scattered away from, from the uh, holding pen at Jurassic Park. But today, my goodness, it could not have been better. Thanks for that, Colette. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> not quite <laughs> redemption, I think, from Mother Nature, but if there was a day for things to be great It and was dry, today. Yeah, that's exactly right. We all got to enjoy that sunshine today. Really beautiful. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. The playoff run, essentially, a couple of months. And spring, a couple of months. And most of it cool and wet. And we're almost to summer. That's coming up this week. The first official day of summer is upon us. It's like, where did spring go, right? Well, today we felt spring. 20 degrees is the current temperature at the moment. And we've got a high pressure. This ridge that's in place, it's being squeezed a little bit. A system that's kind of to the south and, and what's going Going on towards the northwest but in between it is providing some quieter weather and protecting us a little bit a bit more cloud cover in the southwestern Ontario so 
saw that through the day today. It'll clear out through the overnight before coming back tomorrow afternoon. And speaking of tomorrow afternoon, we'll have sunshine to begin around the GTA and then more clouds will kind of be riding in through the afternoon. A bit of instability trying to pop up, but uh, we're not going to see that into the GTA. We're just talking about a few more clouds in terms of what happens. Now, if we look ahead towards midweek, that's when things start to break down a little bit. So we get towards a chance of seeing some showers. I'm keeping it pretty slim for that Wednesday, that hump day, but then into Thursday, uh, we really see some changes and the best chance coming up of when we'll have some wet conditions again. Overnight tonight, 12 to 14 degrees for those overnight lows. There's that little bit of extra cloud cover coming into the afternoon, but it's a mostly sunny day. It's a good looking day Tuesday, so two in a row. Wow, here we go <laughs> into Wednesday, 24 degrees. So getting a little bit milder, that chance of precipitation popping in. It's more significant, like I said, as we start getting towards the end of the week. And there it is. Hard to believe the first day of summer coming our way, but at least it's looking like it's going to be a nice day that day, Chris, 24 and quite a bit of sunshine in there, too. And I should have said earlier, Colette, I love that red dress for Raptors Day. Thank you. And I've even got, you probably can't tell, but my little Raptors, it's got a little Raptors emblem, my bracelet. Oh, nice. Show me when you get down here in a couple minutes. <laughs> Will do. Okay, thanks, Colette. So, of course, we will be back with more Raptors coverage in just a few minutes. But first, I want to give you a sense of some of the other news that we have coming your way tonight. In just a few minutes, is it possible to modernize a school system while reducing funding? A new report is warning the Ford government against that. Plus, horror on the high seas. A Toronto man on a trip of a lifetime across the Atlantic came to an abrupt end after weather forced him and his crew to abandon ship. His tale of survival is coming up after the break. We're back in just two minutes. Tonight on the National. A new report to tell you about tonight that highlights the concerns of over 1,200 school principals in the public sector. Three months after the Ford government announced it was reforming the education system and cutting thousands of jobs, the People for Education report flags that educators worry about their students' future. Ali Shiasan has more. 
you know, usually when we're doing stories about education reform from the lawn of Queen's Park, we're surrounded by protesters using megaphones. But today we're talking about the concerns actually written down on paper by over 1,200 principals from across Ontario. This is the first annual report from the People for Education since the Ford government was elected. The problem comes when you make a lot of changes all at the same time. Back in March, Ontario's Minister for Education announced plans for reform, including increasing class sizes, a renewed math strategy, and more attention to skills that are supposed to better prepare students for jobs, all while cutting nearly 3,500 teaching positions through attrition. So there are thousands and thousands of teaching positions which will no longer be there in school, which is why they're cutting the grade 12 computer science in one high school, or why they're cutting arts courses, or why they're not able to run things like grade 12 calculus. Like they're not, you know, even frills. So then where can we find money to save? Well, I, again, like the thing that's hard about education is it is really expensive, there's no question, but it's an investment. Now, and again, this is hard in the politics because the investment pays off in like 20 years, not four years. In response to the People for Education report, the minister's office reiterated their stance on modernizing the curriculum, saying, quote, our government is protecting what matters most by delivering an education system that puts student achievement at the center of everything we do. The principals surveyed in the report worry about long-term consequences. Kids who are starting school uh, this year in the fall are going to graduate in 2031 and the world's going to look a lot different then. I hope some serious listening happens uh, in the next few weeks even um, so that things slow down a bit. Ali Chiasse on CBC News, Toronto. The CEO of the Daily Bread Food Bank has an unbelievable survival story to tell tonight. Neil Hetherington recently took some time from his job to sail the Atlantic, but it almost cost him his life. Kelda Yoon now with what happened. It was a voyage years in the making. On June 5th, Neil Hetherington, CEO of the Daily Bread Food Bank, and three others set sail from Nova Scotia on the Boundless, a 38-foot cutter, with the aim of reaching the south coast of Portugal a month later. But last week, the unexpected. We were sailing along with um, uh, strong winds. A wave hit the boat in a fashion that snapped our rudder. We knew at that point that we were in uh, complete distress. He took this photo as he and his crew bobbed in a dinghy, waiting for this oil tanker to rescue them. Hetherington is still on this tanker heading to New York as he speaks to us about his ordeal via satellite. I did feel guilty. My cousin Jeff Fairbank has put a labor of love into you for years and has come to an end. So the risk is Mother Nature is unpredictable. Jeff Hadrill is from the National Yacht Club where Hetherington is a member. The North Atlantic is another level. Um, it's cold, um, uh, winds, very strong winds. This is a smaller boat. Neil's boat being bigger, his rudder would be tucked uh, underneath behind. In his case, the uh, boat keeled over on its side, exposing that rudder from underneath near the surface, and then the power of the wave came back down like a pancake on top of it. And there's really nothing you can do at that Absolutely point? Absolutely nothing you can do at that point. A storm, uh, nothing is normal. Uh, rogue waves, I think we've all heard of those. They come out of no nowhere. Hetherington and his crew lost everything at sea, but thankfully no one was injured. Uh, all lives were, um, were uh, saved and uh, everyone's well. I know they're concerned about no passports or what have you. Your life is, is priceless. The tanker Hetherington is traveling on still has hundreds of kilometers to go before reaching New York. Kelda Yoon, CBC News. Toronto. Just an incredible story. Glad everybody is okay tonight. Well, stay with us. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.
All right, so the very festive Colette Kennedy joins us yes. now. Love the outfit. We did love, it. And love the weather as well. <laughs> yeah, the weather's looking great for us. Obviously, it was wonderful today. And tonight, we're looking at some mostly clear skies. Tomorrow, high of 23. Sounds good. That's our show for tonight. Have a great night. Coaches, general manager, president, board of governors. It's a small knit group, and we did this together. We fought every day, we practiced hard, we worked hard, and we just kept our faith. And at the end of the day, y'all always gonna be my brothers, always. And we are now world champs together. And that's all that really matters. I think it was Bono who said the world needs more Canada. The world just got it. We world champions. Thank you. And like they said, enjoy this, enjoy this moment and have fun with it. Aha, ha, ha, ha. Make some noise for the Toronto Raptors. Give somebody a hug today. Hey! That's what I like to see. I like to see all that love. Um, please, I know you made a lot of noise today, but can you please make some noise for this incredible team and this incredible staff one last time? Here they are. The 2019 World Champions. Thank you to the greatest fans in the world. Here's your answer.